Um, if you can hear the excitement in my voice today, I'm excited because of our speaker today. Uh, really good friend of mine, one of my favorite people to hang out with. I love seeing him at the AO meetings. Uh, Andy Santos uh, actually grew up out in Cody, Wyoming, and uh, he's married to his beautiful wife, Carrie. He's got two kids, uh, Sophia and Ryder, and he, uh, he's a book guy, like a lot of the people that are on these calls. Uh, worked with Southwestern Company from 2001 to 2004, and actually started with us directly afterwards. So he's kind of stayed with that Southwestern family of companies until we were sold, uh, but he started with us in January of 2005. Uh, in his lifetime here, he's written over 40 eagles. Uh, for those of you guys that are new, that's over 10,000 in weekly premium. And he's personally recruited uh, over 10 people a year, uh, every year for the last 12 to 15 years. So he's just a, a, a model of consistency year after year after year. Uh, his personal uh, best in recruiting was 24 recruits. And uh, on his personal time, the guy loves uh, music, uh, physical wellness. He's, a, uh, he's known for being in the box. He's a CrossFit uh, guru. He's now become a professional homeschooler and loves time with his family. And I'm going to tell you right now, if there's one thing you need to know, need to know about Andy Santos, the guy has the best uh, attitude in the entire world. So with that, Andy, I turn it over to you. Great to have you on the call this morning. Hey, thanks, Dan. Can you guys hear me okay? Gotcha. Love it. Love it. Awesome introduction. Made my morning. I really appreciate it. Um, you talk about the fact that I've been with Family Heritage now. This is year 16 and then four years with Southwestern. I'm actually sitting in my office, my Nashville office here, and it's in the Southwestern building. So uh, literally still walking through those doors and seeing familiar faces. This is kind of cool. Um, but, guys, I'm, I am so excited to talk about this topic uh, this morning because I think that um, it is the key leverage area that's sort of universal. And so my part today is going to be on attitude, but I'm going to focus on a couple elements of attitude that I think are exceptionally applicable in life that um, I really worked on over my adult life. Um, thankfully, I've been exposed to some really, really cool people that have kind of pushed me in directions and had me learn some different things and pushed me out of my comfort zone and, and taught me uh, what I'm going to share today. So I'm going to open this by just saying a statement. And that statement is, you can actually create whoever you are. You actually have the power to create whoever you want to be. And the single biggest lever that we can move uh, as it relates to our business with Family Heritage, but I think um, oftentimes in life is your attitude. And so I'm going to focus on attitude, and I'm going to spend a lot of time talking about something called self-talk. And so we're going to dig in on that. And hopefully today I'll give you some tools that you can use in your life um, and today to help you start moving that lever more than you have been moving it before, if at all. So um, I want to share an analogy with you, and I'm not going to pretend to be a psychologist. I don't have a degree in psychology. Um, I did take Psychology 101 in college, but I studied math, so I'm a very logical thinker um, by nature, but uh, I learned that when we're little kids, okay, when you're born, um, your identity, your way you view the world, and your consciousness, the way you talk to yourself is literally developed when you're a little kid from like three to five years old, okay? So all of those qualities that you kind of by nature, your defaults, how you see the world, how you respond to things, those are things that you've had for a long time. And <clears throat> so imagine that you have a, a pair of glasses on your face and those glasses are that lens by which you view the world which was really primarily developed when you were really small, right? Events happened, you, you made some decisions when you're little in those formative kind of mental times, and that's your filter, okay? So you're just seeing the world, you're seeing your, your uh, inputs from everything you're experiencing is coming through this lens, okay? So what I wanna teach you today to do is how to try to remove those glasses and be able to experience life without that filter, 
okay, and kind of take the power back, okay? So I joke about this with myself constantly as I see things happen or as things happen in my life or events unfold, and my little voice in my head is talking to me. Think about this. Imagine or realize this. That little voice in your head is you at about five years old. So I want to teach you how to not be bossed around by a toddler today, by a miniature version of yourself based on events that happen when you're real small. Okay. So one of the things I want you to picture, if you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. I'm going to talk about something called the self-confidence cycle. Okay. So draw, imagine a circle. If you have a sheet of paper and there's four elements, okay. An element on the top, an element on the bottom, an element on the right and left. Okay, so kind of like the cycle of the sale. This is the cycle of self-confidence. Okay, and at the very top of that circle, I want you to write the words self-talk. Okay, and then I want you to draw a little arrow, whatever direction your clock spins here, and the second element, so self-talk, a little arrow over to the side of it, I want you to write self-image. Okay, and then from self-image, I want you to draw a little arrow to the bottom, I want you to write the word actions. And then from actions, draw a little arrow to the other side of the circle and write the word results. And then I want you to draw a little arrow from results back to the top, pointing at self-talk. And so with this cycle, this is happening all the time. Okay. And right now with your glasses on, my glasses on, that's kind of displaying our current self image, our current way we view the world. And so <clears throat> let me give you an example. Let's say you get up in the morning and you get out of bed and you go get ready to take a shower and you look in the mirror. Can you guys hear me? I'm seeing a perplexed, perplexed look on Dan's face. You still good? Okay. So you go look in the mirror and you're like, oh my gosh, man, I'm out of shape. Holy cow, like I, I'm not liking what I'm seeing right now, right? And you're talking to yourself about being out of shape and you start thinking like, man, I got to get in shape. And, and this is what you're kind of saying to yourself, right? The voice in your head is kind of saying these things to yourself. And what that's actually doing is just solidifying this current self-image you have of yourself. Now, I'm just using a physical state of your body as an example, okay? So let's say that's reinforcing this self-image you have of I'm way out of shape. So you think, man, I should probably go to the gym at some point, get on top of this, but you know, you, you don't, and your self-image is just, I'm, I'm out of shape. And so what are your actions that follow? They're the actions of someone who is not getting in shape, right? There's someone who's currently out of shape. And so your results from that are to continue to, you know, the results that come from continuing to do what you've been doing, right? You're still out of shape. You're still eating like crap. You're not exercising. You might not get good sleep, whatever that is. And then you're, that points right back at your self-talk and it's like, oh, yep, I'm still out of shape, you know, the next morning when you look at yourself in the mirror, okay? So think about this voice in your head, your own voice. It's always talking and chirping. It's coming from a place of fear, a place of, of self-preservation, um, and it's not usually abundant, okay? And it's not usually in line with the person that we say we want to become. But imagine this voice in your head is in a competition like a tennis match and on one side of the court is this, is this voice in your head with a sweet racket that man it's been upgraded every single day for your whole life and it's playing tennis against nobody okay it is going to win that match a hundred percent of the time and so what self-talk is self-talk is the other player on the tennis match and that other player is has to be consciously created and we have to actually spend mental energy to play that tennis match. Okay. So <clears throat> when I talk about self-talk with people, I think it's important to understand that when I'm talking about it, what I'm talking about is consciously saying words, abundant uh, words that want to create a new self image of yourself out loud. 
come back to this in a minute, but self-talk, guys, is a habit. Self-talk is out loud, okay? Now, it's interesting, if you're just now thinking about this for the first time, you might hear self-talk out loud. What? That's the stupidest thing I've ever thought about. What? Seriously? Self-talk? Guess what? That's your five-year-old self telling that to yourself. Congratulations, right? Uh, to expect any different is ridiculous. Anything that's out of the norm, anything that's not coming from a place of keeping you exactly how you are today or where when you were a little kid is your self-talk of yourself, trying to protect yourself, okay? So <clears throat> I'm going to tell another story. So, you know, uh, Dan mentioned I, I, I sold books back in college. That was one of my first experiences that, that exposed me to people that kind of helped teach me some of these things, but it also placed me in an environment where all of those things are exposed constantly, kind of like family heritage, when we're out in the field and we're experiencing negative people or things that don't work out or, you know, all kinds of different challenges. So I remember being in the, uh, going to work one day, real young, and just getting, getting beat up, you know, like most, most people do when they're starting in sales and still get beat up sometimes, and just getting down and being frustrated and being like, oh my gosh, like what am I doing out here? The voice in my head was just challenging everything. It was like, why are you here? You could be back home working for dad. You could be hanging out with your friends. You're in Florida. You're living in some dude's house behind his house. And it doesn't even have real plumbing. And, you know, you're uh, all these issues just supporting this idea that what I was doing was not working. And I just kind of broke down and, and got to a point where I was in tears, just going, this is, this is brutal. And I went back home that night and I talked to, you know, one of my managers or mentors, I can't even remember who it was, but I remember them challenging me. They're saying, okay, Andy, what I want you to do tomorrow is I want you to say something out loud to yourself that's positive. And I was like, oh my gosh, well, I can think something positive. I'll just think something positive. Really hard to do. So they just said, I want you to say something positive. And I, I can't even remember exactly what the phrase was, but it was something like, in every day, in every way, I'm getting better. People love me. No matter what, I'm becoming the best version of myself. Something along those lines. I remember getting in my car. I can still picture the part of the country. I was working out in the country. It was pretty and green. I can still remember starting to say that to myself. So between people I would talk to, um, every time I'd get in the car, and I just started by doing it just in the morning. You know, actually, it was probably just on my way to work. I just started repeating to myself, okay, you can do this. And every day and every way you're getting better. And every day, every day and every way you're getting better. Every day and every way you're getting better. And what's funny is, you know, at first I was fighting with myself. That tennis match was going on and my little voice in my head was just dominating, right? It was just, it was squashing everything I was saying outside like silly, dumb, not true, not going to happen, not true, not going to happen. Serving aces on me. But at least I was trying to hit it back. And, and eventually, though, I approached somebody and something happened and I got back in my car and I started saying it again and again and again. And slowly but surely, through the course of that day, my current self image started to get a couple cracks in, this, in the shell, started to get a couple cracks, it started to evolve just a little bit. And then that would just give me momentum into my actions. And each time I would go and do an action, I would have a little more pep in my step. I'd have a bigger smile on my face. I started to actually have a little bit of fun, partially because I was laughing at myself for talking out loud to myself. Who knows what people in that area were thinking, be pulled over in the car, some crazy dude yapping to himself out loud. Um, surprised I didn't get the cops called on me. I thought I was crazy. But I kept doing this. And then I started having some breakthroughs. I started getting more results. I started feeling good about myself at the end of the day. And what did that do in that cycle? Those results, whether they were physical results of production or just results in activity or just results in the way I felt, they started to support this concept of talking to myself. And so I kept talking to myself, started building momentum. And pretty sure, pretty soon, day after day after day, my self-image started to evolve. And these glasses I had on started to get switched out a little bit. I had new lenses starting to form. And I kept getting new prescriptions on these glasses. Every day I'd pick up the glasses, keep talking to myself. By the end of the day, I had a whole new set of glasses to put on. And they just kept changing and changing. 
And that was probably the biggest key early on in my career to just understanding how my brain works. Um, and so if you think about that self-confidence cycle, the single biggest leverage point on that cycle is self-talk on that cycle. And so what you say when you talk to yourself is more important than anything else. You, there's so many examples throughout family heritage. I mean, you can look at transparent financial. Justin Ellingson is a different person today than he was as a team leader. And he will tell you what he started saying out loud to himself and other people is what changed the course of everything, okay? He started saying it, and so he started believing it, and that was his self-image that started to get created, and everything kind of perpetually came from there. So at one point in my self-talk journey, if you could call it that, I remember going to work, and I just started having fun doing self-talk. I'm like, this is awesome. Uh, I would literally be talking constantly, 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 constantly. So if I wasn't in front of a person, it immediately started, and it only stopped when I started engaging with another person. So one day I went to work, and I was just, you know, the confidence was off through the, through the charts, and I just said to myself in the car, I can never forget, Andy, you have the best attitude in the whole world. You have the best attitude in the entire world. Of all six-plus billion people, there's no one else on planet Earth that has a better attitude than you. You have the very best. Nothing, nothing in the world can, can harm your attitude. It's so good. It's incredible. People want it. They can't believe it's true. It's so good. So I started saying this to myself, and that became my, like, just jamming self-talk, right? I just feel like you have the best attitude in the world. Someone would be rude to me. I'm like, man, I have the best attitude in the world, right? Um, and so I started saying this to myself. People would follow me, and they'd hear me saying this. And they'd be like, oh, my gosh, this guy is saying he has the best attitude in the world. What's funny is that other people started hearing me say this. My friend Rory heard me say this all the time, and he put it in his book about me having the best attitude. And then my manager would hear me say it, and they'd start introducing me and saying, man, Andy, I'll tell you one thing about Andy is he's got the best attitude ever. What do you think that did to my self-image? I became the person who has the best attitude in the world, okay? And, oh, my gosh, how powerful is that? I literally created a new person, a new way of seeing myself as someone with the best attitude in the world. When I was little, if you asked my parents, I didn't have the best attitude in the world. No chance. You know, I didn't have even a good attitude most of the time. But this is something that you can create. Whatever it is that you want, whatever person you want to be, you can create. It goes back to the gym, the teacher and speech of what you will someday be you are now becoming. That's a fact. Who you are today is exactly a result of the decisions and choices you've made throughout your life. When you think about who you want to, be who you want to become, guess what? In five years? you're going to be exactly the same unless you consciously choose to do things that that person does to become that person. And the single biggest leverage point we have in building your self-confidence is what you say to yourself. Okay. So, you know, as we walk through life, it's kind of funny. We have opportunities to say things to ourselves all the time, right? We meet, a read per, we meet a rude person, they're just in a bad mood, and that interaction happens. They said, I'm not interested. And then we leave the business. What happened there was they said, I'm not interested. That's what happened. But what we do by nature is we add a whole bunch of meaning to everything that somebody says. And it's happening in light speed. Subconsciously, that little voice barking in your head, which is you. Okay, little kid you. So something happens, we make it mean something. Something happens, we make it mean something. We've been walking through life, having things happen, and letting our little five-year-old toddler twerp tell us what it means and shape who we are. But through talking to yourself, 
out loud, consciously, from a place of the person you want to be, you can override that voice and thus change who you actually are. Okay? So, yeah, it's just hysterical. When you actually break down what actually happens, I, I think about this. We get in a car, we drive somewhere, we have a conversation, we get back in the car, we drive somewhere, we have a conversation, we get back in the car, we drive somewhere, we have a conversation. That's what happens. All the other stuff created by you. So when we can take hold of what we say to ourselves, we can change the world. We can change your whole world. You can change your whole world. Excuse me. So <clears throat> that's really my message today is who do you want to create yourself to be? And you can't just think it. you got to say it out loud to yourself. And it's a habit. I talked about this yesterday on a different call, but I was asked the question, well, how do you how do you do this? Like, how do you start? It sounds like it's a habit. How do you start forming this habit? And you form this habit just like any other habit. I didn't get in the best shape of my life at 40 years old by listening to my voice in my head. I had to say, you know what? I'm going to get in the best shape ever. I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to just, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a beast. I am an absolute beast. I'm going, I'm working out every day. I don't care. Every day. I'm finding time. I'm working out every day, every single day. Started doing it. I started to think, wow, I, myself, I was like, I am the guy who works out every day. This is great. My, then my actions started following that, and I started getting results. I'm like, yep, I'm the person who works out every day. Yep, I am. Mm -hmm. Yep. Just kept saying it to myself. Yep, I'm, I'm really good at this. I'm really good at this. I'm really good at this. So <clears throat> what are you going to create yourself to be? Um, when we think about the habit-forming part, I just challenge everybody to choose an abundant phrase today that is pointed in the direction of the person you want to be and my challenge is not all day not all month not all year but for a goal period of your day a two-hour span that if you're not engaged with another human you're repeating this phrase out loud to yourself expect to laugh at yourself internally that's gonna happen and that's okay it's supposed to happen you're not going to overwrite 30, 40 years of a voice in your head by saying it one time, right? But say it for an hour, say it for two hours. You should hit 200 reps of this in your first couple hours and watch how you feel when you're done with that goal period and then do it again and then do it again and again. You will see a change in how you look at yourself. It'll wear off if you quit. If, if you quit talking to yourself, it'll wear off. It happens all the time. And I catch myself, part of why I'm thankful for being invited on this call was it, it caused me to rethink and re remember the control that we have over ourselves. So start forming a habit. So I challenge everybody, pick a phrase that you will say to yourself for the next two hours today. Um, and I got some tools, Dan, if you want me to share them, but that's the overall message I've got. It's a great message. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I've got the, uh, I got your cycle of, of your cycle right there, and uh, I love it. Meaning making machines, okay. right, Andy? Um, yeah. How how's the best way for us to get those tools? Is it something you want to uh, take the time right now to talk about a little bit, or is there uh, is it something you want to send me and we can post it? Yeah. Well, I'll do both. I want to I want to just say a couple, and then I'm going to just share one. I don't have to share my screen. I'm just going to read it. Um, but so so there's a bunch of good ones that we already have access to. Eagles claims, all these things. A book you should definitely read, and most of you probably have it and don't ever read it and haven't done it like you're supposed to, is Greatest Salesman in the World. Absolutely, in my opinion, the number one attitude book ever written. It's insane. So good. It actually tells you the prescription of it is to say these things out loud to yourself. You think that's on accident? It's not. Okay? Now, I also, through dig, doing some digging through my archives on my hard drive, I found this incredible card from Zig Ziglar, okay? And it's, it's a life-changing procedure is what it's called. And I just thought I'd, I'd close by sharing this with you guys, and then I'll send this to Dan, and if he could uh, distribute this, this would be great. Okay, so this is a card. It's literally like a, like a goal card, right? And this is what it says. 
okay? I'm just gonna read this. The eyes are the windows to the soul, so the person you are capable of becoming each evening just before, so are the person you are capable of becoming each evening just before you go to bed. Stand in front of a mirror alone and in the first person, present tense, look yourself in the eye and repeat with passion and enthusiasm paragraphs A, B, C, and D. Repeat this process every morning and every evening from this day forward. Within one week, you will notice remarkable changes in your life. After 30 days, add the procedure at the bottom of the card. So I just want to share with you this, and I want you to hear me read this. And I challenge anybody to go, okay, if I read this to myself every day out loud, that this wouldn't change my life, okay? So here it is. I, Andy Santos, am an honest, intelligent, organized, responsible, committed, teachable person who is sober, loyal, and clearly understands that regardless of who signs my paycheck, I am self-employed. I am an optimistic, punctual, enthusiastic, goal-setting, smart-working, self-starter who is a disciplined, focused, dependable, persistent, positive thinker with great self-control and an energetic and diligent team player um, and hard worker who appreciates the opportunity my company and the free enterprise system offers me. I am thrifty with my resources and apply common sense to my daily tasks. I take honest pride in my competence, appearance, and manners and am motivated to be and do my best so that my healthy self-image remain on solid ground. These are the qualities which enable me to manage myself and help give me employment security in a non-job security world. I, Andy Santos, am a compassionate, respectful encourager who is a considerate, generous, gentle, patient, caring, sensitive, personable, attentive, fun-loving person. I am supportive, giving and forgiving, clean, kind, unselfish, affectionate, loving, family-oriented human being, and I am sincere and open-minded, good listener, and a good finder who is trustworthy. These are the qualities which enable me to build good relationships with my associates, neighbors, mate, and family. Here's number C, letter C. I, Andy, am a person of integrity with the faith and wisdom to know what I should do and the courage and convictions to follow through. I have the vision to manage myself and to lead others. I am authoritative, confident, and humbly grateful for the opportunity life offers me. I am fair, flexible, resourceful, creative, knowledgeable, decisive, and an extra miler with a servant's attitude who communicates well with others. I am consistent, pragmatic teacher with character and finely tuned sense of humor. I am an honorable person and am balanced in my personal family and business life, and I have a passion for being, doing, and learning more today so I can be, do, and have more tomorrow. These are the qualities of the winner I was born to be, and I am fully committed to developing these marvelous qualities with which I have been entrusted. Tonight, I'm going to sleep wonderfully well. I will dream powerful, positive dreams. I will awaken energized and refreshed. Tomorrow is going to be magnificent, and my future is unlimited. Recognizing, claiming, and developing these qualities, which I already have, gives me a, leg a legitimate chance to be happier, healthier, more prosperous, more secure, have more friends, greater peace of mind, better family relationships, and legitimate hope that the future will be even better. I know that was long, but holy cow, I just read that. I almost started crying reading that. So good. Because it's so abundant. So, guys, like, this is easy. This is low-hanging fruit for us. This attitude stuff. I was, Dan, Dan was frozen on my screen and on my screen in a belly laugh right there. That was just beautiful. But this is low-hanging fruit. Okay, of all the things we can work on and spend time on, this is low the lowest hanging fruit, but it's the biggest leverage point. So hopefully, hopefully that hits home. And um, I'll share this with uh, with Dan. And uh, I just encourage everybody to let's work on ourselves and continue to uh, create who we want to be.